My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Heavenly Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Now, if you don't have a King James Version of the Bible, you can download several free apps. I recommend the My Sword Bible app. That's one of the ones I use in my phone. But if you're sitting in front of your computer or laptop, go to BibleGateway.com and you can use that to get your King James Version. Now, if you're a person who doesn't prefer the King James Version, that's totally fine with me. I use the King James because I know from my experience, it is the most accurate Bible that we have even to this day. That's why I use the King James. And when I'm teaching in the videos, I translate the archaic words for those who might have difficulty with them. You know, like thou, it just means you, and shall means will. So I have a Bible study video titled, Why Be King James Only? And in that video, I show you why I prefer the King James. But if you don't, that's perfectly fine, because I know a lot of people who have learned God's truth not using the King James Version of the Bible. Now, I didn't mean to digress, but I felt led by the Spirit to say that. Let's approach the throne of glory. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we ask that you forgive us of all of our sins, Lord. Wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ and make us clean. Fill us right now with your precious Holy Spirit, Almighty God, as we go into your word, the Holy Bible. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God. Amen. Today, in many churches across this great country, the United States of America, and all over the world, we have statues of a blonde-haired, blue-eyed Jesus Christ. We have paintings as well. And many people who profess to be Christians, I mean good people, sincere people, have been thoroughly convinced that this is what the Messiah actually looked like. They've been bombarded with this imagery to the extent that when someone shows them a picture of a black Jesus, they frown up and say, oh, no, no, no way. And so we're going to see how this white, blonde haired blue-eyed Jesus came into existence. I did a Bible study titled, Was Jesus Christ Black or White?, where I showed you from Scripture and proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that not only was Christ a black man when he walked this earth, but so were the children of Israel, his mother, Mary, and all the rest of them. And so I encourage you to study with me on that particular subject if you haven't studied with me on that before. And I also have a video titled, Who Are the Real Jews?, where I show you in that Bible study that the Jews, the true Jews of old, were people of color. The Bible and history tell us a different story. So where did this blonde hair, blue eyed, Caucasian, European Jesus come from? How did that happen? Well, before we get into that, I want to read 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse one to four. The apostle Paul, being guided by God's spirit, wrote, would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly. He said, I wish to God you could bear with me a little bit in my foolishness and indeed bear with me. Now he's talking to the saints in the church of Corinth and to us who are living today. He says in verse two, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused or engaged you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. He says in verse three, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent, which is one of Satan's names, beguiled or seduced Eve through his subtlety. 
So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. He says, I'm worried that the devil's going to trick y'all and, and get you just like he got Eve. That's what he's saying. He says in verse four, for if he that cometh preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which uh, ye have not received, and another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. So he said the devil's going to come and he's going to preach another Jesus and he's going to have another spirit and another gospel. And that's exactly what has happened. You know, the Jesus that most people worship today is not the Jesus of the Bible. It's a Jesus that was conjured up by wicked men being misled by Satan, the devil. And so it's very important that we know the Bible constantly warned about that. And it's a dangerous thing because if you believe that false image of Christ, when the Antichrist comes, if he comes in that same image, which I believe he will, you're going to think that's Jesus coming back. And you're going to bow down and worship the, the wrong Jesus, and you're going to be, be lost. Because you need to understand, before the real Christ comes, the false Messiah comes. And so Paul warned about it, and we see it happening even today. Now we're going to deal with how these false images started appearing. The early Catholic Church knew the truth about Christ being a black Hebrew. They knew the truth about all the people in the Bible and children of Israel being black. And they had several paintings of the black Messiah. Oh, yes, they did. And the black Virgin Mary. They are the ones who had these paintings in the catacombs over there in the Vatican. And this went on for quite a while until the devil moved certain people to start coming up with these false images of the Messiah. There was a Pope named Alexander the Sixth, and he had an illegitimate son named Caesar Borgia. And it's believed that the portrait that Leonardo da Vinci painted of Caesar Borgia started to serve as the image of the white Jesus that we see now. And there was another artist at that time, Michelangelo, who started coming up with these false images of the Messiah. So this was Renaissance art inspired by the devil. Now, when you look at the picture of Caesar Borgia and you look at one of the false images of white Jesus, you can see a resemblance. And so this is what happened. The Catholic Church started conjuring up these false images of the Messiah because they were butchering and killing the true people of God who were black. And so the devil put it in somebody's mind that they needed to change the image of Jesus to condone their killing of, of his people. And this went on for years. All of these white images of the Messiah came out of that Renaissance era and they're nothing more than some artist's depiction of the Messiah. You know what they wanted him to look like. So they took a black story and made it a white story. And if you don't know these things, if you just started learning about the Lord and you see white Jesus in your Bible, you will believe that. You say, yeah, he, there's a picture of him right there. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you that that's not true. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. And in my Bible study, Was Jesus Christ Black or White? I show how the Israelites were constantly mistaken for Egyptians. And the pictures of the ancient Egyptians found in on the walls of the pyramids prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that they were black. And so if the ancient Israelites were constantly mistaken, they were black as well. And there's so much other proof found in the Bible that they were all people of color. So I encourage you to study with me on uh, that Bible study, Was Jesus Christ Black or White? You know, because I, I share that information in the scriptures in that video. I'm not going to do it in this one 
for the sake of time. But one thing I am going to share in this video that I shared in Was Jesus Christ Black or White? There's a book titled The Messiah, Jesus, and John the Baptist, according to Flavius Josephus, recently rediscovered capture of Jerusalem and the other Jewish and Christian sources by a historian named Robert Eisler. Robert Eisler restored this writing of Flavius Josephus. This is what the Jewish historian Flavius Josephus wrote about Jesus. He says, at that time also there appeared a certain man of magic power. Now the reason why he said that is because the people who didn't have God's spirit thought that he was performing the miracles by means of magic. That's why Flavius Josephus wrote that. Anyways, he says, if it be meet, which means fit to call him a man whose name is Jesus, whom certain Greeks call a son of a God, but his disciples call the true prophet who is supposed to have raised dead persons and have cured all diseases. Uh, Flavius Josephus wrote, both his nature and his form were human. For he was a man of simple appearance, listen to this, mature age, black skinned, short growth, three cubits tall, hunched back with a long face, a long nose, eyebrows meeting above the nose that the spectators could take fright with scanty, which means curly hair but having a line in the middle of the head after the fashion of the Nazarenes with an undeveloped beard. So that's what the historian Flavius Josephus wrote about the description of the Messiah. And he lived back then. There's just too many facts out there to prove that this white Jesus is not the real Jesus, okay? In John chapter 5, verse 43, Jesus said, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. He said this to uh, the people who were rejecting him. He says, if another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Now, this is important because Christ is talking about how the Antichrist is going to come before he returns. And if you don't know that, you're going to believe the first Jesus that you see. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, the Apostle Paul, being guided by God's Spirit, writes, Now we beseech you, that means we beg you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, too, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Verse 3. He says, Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The return of Jesus Christ. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, that's a falling away from the truth, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Verse 4, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So here's Paul teaching the same thing that Christ taught, that before Jesus returns, an imposter is going to show up on the world stage. And that's why it's very important that you and I don't buy into this false image of the Messiah, this blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus, because Jesus Christ was not a Caucasian. The Bible does not teach that and nor does history support it. Paul warned about Satan coming to pretend to be Jesus. And I believe because he got so many people believing in this false image this European artwork of Jesus, that he's going to appear looking just like that. Christ warned about this. This is how Paul knew about it. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 23, we read, Then if any man shall say unto you, Jesus says, Lo, which means behold, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, 24, for there shall arise false Christ, and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very 
elect. You see that? And so, my brothers and sisters, it is vital that you and I study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If we do, we will not be deceived now, and we won't be deceived when the false Messiah comes. Now, if this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, whatever you give is a tremendous blessing to me, this is how you can do it. I encourage you to go to paypal.com and set up a free PayPal account and then you can also download the PayPal app. It's free. And if you choose to do it that way, then you would go, use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app, which is the one I prefer. And if you choose to bless me using cash app, my uh, code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton 1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelly. For Zelly, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630-441-4563. And then I have videos that I put on Patreon. Some people prefer to give their money through Patreon. So if you're going to do it that way, you would go to patreon.com slash Barton underscore Porter. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly and this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. We all need prayer. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. Be reasonable about the times you call. Do not call me late at night when people are asleep in the bed. That's just not cool. So use some discretion, but I encourage you to call me. Just don't call me late at night. <laughs> and if you don't have a phone, you can email me your Bible questions or prayer requests or whatever you want to send me. You know, if you just want to share a testimony or share some experience, send it to bartonaaronporter at gmail.com. Now, these Last few things are of the utmost importance, saints. I need your support. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're being blessed through this ministry, take the time to hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. I've seen a lot of people watch and study with me on a regular basis, but they're not even subscribed to the channel. Hit the subscription button. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. I release Bible study videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. It will let you know a new video is available. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, Please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. Very important. These are non-financial ways you can help this ministry. And I need your support, saints. So please do that. And last but not least, it just came to my mind. If you really were blessed by a Bible study video, take the time to put something in the comment section. It encourages me to know that my preaching and teaching isn't in vain. And God can use that to encourage somebody else to actually watch the video and see what the Bible has to say about a particular thing. 
So take the time to put something in the comment section. Now, last but not least, you see me wearing these shirts all the time. These are shirts that I designed myself. I have an online t-shirt store. And I just recently purchased the domain name, godwear.store, which makes it real easy for you to get there. So go to my online t-shirt store and check out the Godwear. I got some really cool stuff in there. Hoodies, men and women t-shirts, coffee mugs. And these shirts can be used as the perfect tool to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ without you ever opening your mouth. So please go to the Godwear store and check out the Godwear. If you like something, get it. Because when you do that, you're also blessing me and this ministry as well. So, until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and goodbye.